Welcome back everybody, this is Eric and Chad here with Iraq Veteran 8888 and today we're going to do another Firearms Fact uh, video for you. This one is a viewer suggested uh, topic. Um, somebody wanted to know if we could explain, you know, exactly the ins and outs of 5R rifling. Um, I know this is sort of a, I guess, somewhat technical type of subject, but I wanted to make a video about it just to explain the difference because um, conventional rifling is a six groove rifling and uh, Chad has prepared a uh, wonderful artistic representation of the way that these rifling patterns look. So 5R rifling Wait has an asymmetric profile to it. This is really technical, so are we the best to explain this? Because we're just unsophisticated rednecks. Yes, we are, but it, it, but it is an asymmetrical rifling, which means that anytime you have a, a, uh, a land on one side of the barrel, directly across there's going to be a groove mm -hmm. rather than another land. And what that does is it doesn't distort the surface of the bullet of the project or the bullet itself, the projectile, mm -hmm. and it gives, I would imagine also a much uh, less friction on the bullet, which should mm -hmm. also increase um, muzzle velocities and it's supposed to not wear as badly in terms of fouling out and getting copper fouling in your barrel. So there's a lot of things that go along with 5R that make it a really nice rifling system. Supposedly, and of I course mean, the 700 here mm -hmm. has a 5R barrel in it. And that's a factory gun. I, I wish I would have went with one of these when I bought my first 700. I bought one of the AACSDs and the only thing left on it, you'll be seeing a video about it before too long, plus these guns, but the only <laughs> thing left on it that's stock is the receiver. <laughs> yep. So, but. The 5R is pretty interesting because, like Eric said, it doesn't create a pinch point. That's the whole idea because we have conventional rifling, you have points of, um, you have lands across from each other. So it's basically pinching the projectile in those areas. But I think with, I think, I think the real, the real kicker there is with the kind of entry level rifle barrels that aren't like precision honed, that hand lapped in the whole nine yards. I think that's where you're going to see problems with the six screws. I have a, a Criterion barrel that's hand lapped and such, and I've, I saw a notable velocity increase going between the conventional length barrel, 20 inches, and then the Criterion barrel. I haven't had a chance to really test like the 5R 20 inch versus my rifle with stock ammo because I've only ever shot hand loads out of my rifle, but I, I saw, well. I saw eight, uh, 80 feet per second velocity increase going from the stock barrel to the Criterion barrel with the same exact load. So, and that's a conventional barrel. Is it to say that it's no more accurate than a 5R or a 5R is more accurate than that? Maybe, maybe not. I think if you run with a 5R that's been really, you know, hand honed really well and it's nice and smooth, I think that's the big kicker what Chad's mm -hmm. talking about is the fit and finish of a rifle barrel really has a lot to do with, you know, how, how much the barrel's gonna foul out mm -hmm. uh, from successive shots. Because, you know, if it's got some really sharp, gnarly grooves and they weren't really properly, uh, you know, finished, finished mm -hmm. lapped that well. That's why they sell bore lapping bullets. Mm -hmm. You can uh, buy like the Tubbs bore lapping bullets and it's a progressive amount of grit that you can basically shoot through the gun mm -hmm. and that grit will help polish out some of those imperfections mm -hmm. and you'll get slightly higher muzzle velocities or if you've obtained a gun that maybe it's a good solid action and the barrel's not bad, it doesn't shoot too bad, but maybe it's got some like slight pitting or imperfections in the barrel, mm -hmm. those lapping bullets can also polish out some minor imperfections that sometimes the naked eye won't really pick up in a barrel. So, uh, like the Hawk bore scopes, I know mm -hmm. you guys have probably seen those, they're very expensive, but if you have access to one, or if your gunsmith has access to a Hawk bore scope, um, put, put one of those Hawks down the barrel and have a look. If you think your barrel's in really pristine shape, take a look with a Hawk mm -hmm. and they don't hide anything. You nope. can see every little minor imperfection that might exist in your barrel. And if you take a $900 match grade barrel versus you know, a rack grade you know, Savage Axis, mm -hmm and compare those barrels, there's going to be some pretty drastic difference you'll, in the fit and finish between those two barrels. You'll definitely see on the cheaper barrels, you'll see like burrs here and there on the uh, the lands, uh, in between lands and the grooves, where the, the cutting implement, depending on how it was rifled, um, would have left those machining marks. And they basically do a very minimal amount of finish work on those because the hand lapping process is what actually adds a lot of cost to custom barrels and such. But yeah. um, like I said earlier, you know, with a conventional six groove barrel that's hand lapped, I feel that you know you can probably shoot it just as well as you could a 5R, but I think really the test of, of which one's better would be like, okay, you have a test fixture with a two inch bull barrel, you know, one of them's six groove, one of them's 5R, they're both hand lapped, 
and you have that thing in a fixture. Yep. Like accuracy, like a, velocity, yeah, like a race gun, and you shoot the exact same ammo through it. Yeah, you could probably see a notable difference. But I've shot like my custom rifle. I've shot Eric's custom rifles here, and these are actually more factory. This is than really more else. of a factory rig. I mean, but, the only thing I would even consider even part ways custom would be the L5 metal. Bottom, bottom metal. Yeah, yeah, this is Badger L5 bottom metal, and you have and the same trigger that I have in my rifle. The Jewel too, the HPR, or whatever. Yep. Yeah. So, so on this, the um, the stock has to be. Uh, opened up to accept the L5 Badger uh, bottom metal, but other than that, it's pretty much a factory 5R. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, and it shoots exceptionally well. And the thing is, like, it's a lot harder to shoot a gun into a half inch. I and mean, I know a lot of people throw around that, oh, is it a minute gun? Is it a half a minute gun? Is it a half inch gun? But the thing is, it's a lot harder to consistently shoot a bolt gun into under a half an inch mm -hmm. than you might think. So a lot of it comes down to sort of being a bit of hogwash. I mean, if you've got a <laughs> if you've got a six groove barrel that's reasonably well finished, don't split hairs over whether or not you got a five R versus a. I know this is probably hard to see, but the five R's, you know, if if you've got one or the other and the gun is shooting into a half inch or less for you, then guess what? Congratulations, you can shoot a gun into a half inch. Mm -hmm. But now, if, if every single bolt gun you get behind, say you get behind this factory 5R mm -hmm. and you can't shoot it under an inch anyway, then the differences between those two rifling types are probably going to be yep. uh, uh, not important <laughs> well, to your overall uh, quest for accuracy. Yep. I mean, as far as like switching to a 5R barrel, the trigger helps. Uh, the trigger helps a lot. Those yeah. jewels are amazing. But the, the trick with like bolt actions and such, I mean, something that I learned kind of in my process of, of kind of customizing a bare bones rifle was. You know, if you don't start with a good barrel, if your factory barrel isn't good, if it's not made into the receiver properly, if it's not yeah. blueprinted, I mean, mine had an issue where the receiver was canned off from the, the barrel and the, the locking lugs were only contacting on one side. So the barrel was going to have to be pulled anyways, and I planned on shooting that barrel out. And, and, and that could be a, Reming, a, a factory Remington 5R barrel that could exactly have the same exact issue regardless of how good of a barrel they put in it. If the action's not true and if the locking lugs are not making full contact, you're losing a lot of accuracy yep. potential right there anyway. So yep. a bolt gun is an entire ecosystem that revolves around a bullet leaving the barrel. Yet there is a chain to rifle accuracy from mm -hmm. the human being touching the gun and interacting with it to the minute that the bullet leaves the surface of the barrel and is departing on its flight down range all of those factors can really matter. And mm -hmm. that fit and finish and that polish on the barrel is a really big deal. Mm -hmm. Five R's, I think, get a good rap because that also, depending on the type of ammunition you're running, some types of bullets, like namely Sierra Match Kings, have relatively soft jackets. Spear bullets also, like mm -hmm. the Grand Slam bullets, they also have very, very soft jackets. So a really rough rifling profile whether it's by nature of being a six groove, where the lands are directly, or yeah, yeah, the lands are directly across from each other, perpendicular no, to each not other, not perpendicular, uh, uh, symmetrical. To They're each symmetrical, other. symmetrical to each other. So when those lands are across from each yeah. other, that soft jacket can become upset. And a lot of it comes down to start pressures. So depending on the powders you're running, those start mm -hmm. pressures and those chamber pressures, the minute that that bullet upsets and gets into that rifling. It can distort the mm -hmm. surface of the bullet. It can deform that soft jacket on that bullet. And that is where you're seeing the loss of accuracy. And that comes down to polish, but it also comes down to rifling profile. Mm -hmm. So it would be really curious to take a well-polished, you know, six-groove traditional barrel and a 5R, both in equal length, both in equal configuration, and then do velocity testing, accuracy testing to see if that is in fact true. Now the 5R, mm -hmm. just because you can't cheat physics, there's no such thing as a free lunch when it comes to friction, coefficients and mm -hmm. things like that. Now we're getting into like the science related thing of it, but when you're, t it, it, it is science related because it, it is a co coefficient. It is, I just, I just don't, under, I don't understand none of that stuff. But, but it is a friction coefficient that you are not reaching when that, when that bullet is not being pinched on mm -hmm. both sides, okay? It is basically, it's basically taking away part of that pressure and distributing it equally. It's being hugged. It's it's being it's being more caressed down the barrel rather than ah it's just you know pinch. So yeah, yeah. Ah! So it does reduce friction mm -hmm. and it does reduce the amount of de deformation that can occur on the bullet, especially with a lot of these match bullets that use very very soft jackets, mm -hmm. especially namely spear 
and Sierra, which mm -hmm. I shoot a lot of Sierra bullets. Mm -hmm. I also shoot a lot of Lapua bullets, and Lapua mm -hmm. bullets actually have some pretty stout jackets on them, which make them a little bit better for an unforgiving type of rifling pattern that might be a little bit rough. I find that from gun to gun, no matter what the rifling profile, the Lapua bullets tend to shoot pretty dang good in mm -hmm. just about anything you can throw them in. I'd so be, uh, sometimes that matters. I'd be curious when we get out to do the videos on these guns, I'd be curious to see like basically take your rifle with factory ammo because I, like I said, I shoot handloads through mine, but yeah. take your 20 inch gun and let's pit it up against mine and let's just shoot groups, like each of us can shoot some groups at 600. Maybe factory versus aftermarket. Yeah, and just see like, I mean, I'm, I'd be curious to see what the barrels will do because I haven't chronographed mine with factory ammo yet. Yeah. I've chronographed this one, I've chronographed the 20 inch gun. I mean, that so. would be a really good thing just to see 20 to 20, factory 20 inch 5R versus yours, mm -hmm. to see if the velocities are like right there in mm -hmm. the same ballpark or if possibly due to the maybe slightly better fit and finish of his aftermarket barrel, if he's achieving slightly higher velocities dare I say, maybe even better accuracy, uh, which we were out doing some chronograph work with um, the 24-inch gun Look, and I, the 20-inch gun, I, and they were shooting good. I can tell you right now, these guns are extremely consistent. Both of them are. I mean, I shot basically five five round groups, uh, five yeah, five five shot groups in pretty rapid succession, just basically as fast as I could load a five round mag and then reset the chrono. But um, they were easily sub minute. And you know, most of the groups were clover leafed into a dime or yeah, less. Yeah, well under a know? half inch. I mean, so, if you could, if you can put five shots on a dime, that says more. I would say, I would dare, I would say, it probably says more about the shooter than it does the rifle. I mean, if you get a really good rifle that's capable of that, and a shooter can get behind it and and shoot consistent sub sub half minute groups, that's that's good. Mm -hmm. That's that's what you're looking for. Well, gun, and, um, guns like that will let you know what you're doing wrong. Correct. In the big scheme Especially of with that dang trigger, that jewel. Yeah, it's like such a nice trigger. The jewel, uh, like a that's pound the, and a half. yeah, it's the HVR, I think. HVR, I think, I HPR. Think the, yeah, something like that. I can't remember what it's called. It's like a pound and a half. Oh, yeah, it's light. It's super light. But anyway, guys, um, I didn't mean to like get off on any tangents there, oh, but <laughs> hopefully that answers that question that our uh, our viewer gave us. We forgot about this. Well, this is, this is old school rifling, but you have stuff that's even two groove, like the old infields, like... Yeah. What some of the number fours and all were, were yeah. two groove rifling. You literally look down the barrel and there's two grooves. Right. And they just run across from each other, just meow, all yep. the way down. And, and that's you know, enough to grab on the And that bullet. might actually even merit a video that we'll do later because there's all Military different types. Yeah, profiles. there's all different types of rifling yeah. profiles. I mean, everything from Whitworth rifling mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, basically Medford, you've, you've got infield. Medford rifling, infield rifling, you've got Martini rifling, mm -hmm. Henry rifling, like on the Martini Henry. Mm -hmm. All of those different rifling patterns have a slightly different thing kind of going on with them. So this is just explaining more or less a traditional six screw barrel, barrel uh, versus a 5R. So yeah. hopefully that kind of points you guys in the right direction um, and that answers your question there. I apologize. I don't remember the viewer's name that submitted the question. I had a bunch of them written down. But thank you very much for the question. That's a good one. Hopefully this pointed some of you mm -hmm. uh, in the right direction. We appreciate uh, the support from you guys that we get in various forms, whether you're commenting and sharing the videos, liking the videos, or um, whether you're submitting um, you know, questions for us to answer. We always uh, try to take on your questions as best we can. Mm -hmm. Or if you're one of the viewers that supports us on Patreon or through through programs like Man Cans, you know we sell like a monthly uh, subscription box called Man Cans. If you purchase that, you're helping the channel out. Also, shirts over on Forge from Freedom. That's a great way you can support the channel. So if you found this video interesting and you learned something, consider helping us out and supporting the channel. Uh, any support you could give would be greatly appreciated. So you guys have a good day. Thanks very much. We'll see you next time.